Weather is changing at a rapid pace and continues to have a significant impact on society. In the last few years alone, the U.S. has seen record hurricane intensity, winter storms, and tornadoes occurring later or earlier than seasonal norms, and extreme heat waves drop flooding across the country. It's going crazy. So the weather company is here today to reveal how weather will impact us, impact us in 2024. Today I have Dan Leonard, Senior Meteorologist at the Weather Company. Good morning, Dan, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, great to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Weather has been fairly crazy recently with severe weather events appearing more and more. It's usually a question to ask at a dinner party or in an elevator, but what in the world is going on with this weather? <laughs> Don't forget the grocery store checkout lines. I always get that one too. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously uh, weather's changing. And the, the number one question I get once people find out I'm a meteorologist is, hey, is this climate change? And I can't definitively say, hey, climate change is causing all these extreme events. But what I do say is that these kind of extreme events are more likely in a warmer climate. And from a meteorological perspective, it's pretty simple. You're adding heat to a system, which is energy, so that's more energy for the jet stream to work with. That simple. So take this winter, for example. You're warm overall, but you get this really extreme cold shot in mid-January. Uh, you had massive Arctic outbreak all the way down into the deep south, record low temps, um, and then we flip right back into a warm pattern after that. So. This is a common theme I've noticed that happened last year, right around Christmas time, we had another big cold shot, mild winter. And the year before that was the big Texas freeze off. Again, really mild winter, but you had this really intense cold shot to end winter. So I think going forward, this is kind of the theme that we get with a warmer climate where you have these generally mild winters overall, but you're punctuated with really extreme Arctic blasts on occasion. You know, I've heard that the weather impacts consumer decisions. That makes sense when you're talking about what to wear or if you need an umbrella. In what other area does weather impact consumer decision making? Yeah, so much more than you think. Uh, if you left the house today, you were affected by weather. It's, it's sort of the ultimate unifier of people. It's ubiquitous across the board. Everybody shares in that effect, but it's all about context too. If I told you it's 55 degrees today, what does that mean to you? It means something different to somebody in Miami. That's parka weather, but maybe up in Boston, you're breaking out the shorts and the t-shirts. So at, at the weather company, we have a really great team that analyzes all this data, all these analytics, crunch the numbers, and come up with some consumer behaviors based on weather. And you get some surprising results sometimes. Like for example, in the Western US, when it's foggy, you end up with higher beer sales for whatever reason. I don't even know what causes that, but um, <laughs> That's just a, oh, just one tidbit of all this multitude of data that we come up with on consumer habits based on the weather. So there's some pretty unexpected results in there. <laughs> AB must be smiling on that one, anheuser Bush. How can business leaders adapt to help future-proof their business to better plan ahead and react accordingly to the weather? Well, it's funny, uh, I have a background in economics, and one of the things that drives me nuts when I hear a company talk about their quarterly sales numbers and how they missed expectations and their stock tanked, but, and, it, and they, they, they love to blame the weather. There was an unforeseen weather event and our sales missed expectations, but in this day and age, it's just not acceptable for a company to not have a good weather strategy. They have a good business plan, they have a business model, but where's their weather strategy? Um, our forecasting and our data is so good now that companies really need to sort of utilize this and come up with a plan to mitigate the weather in the future. I mean, our weather's not gonna get any less extreme than it is now in the future, and it's really just not acceptable for a company to blame the weather for, for their bad you know, they're bad quarterly numbers anymore. So that's one thing that we're doing here and that's why we're helping out with getting better forecasts overall in general moving forward. Now, with so much change and weather events happening all the time, I'm sure there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Now you hold the distinction of being the world's most accurate forecaster. What goes into our weather forecast within the Weather Channel app and what makes it different? Yeah, so we, uh, we're, we're number one downloaded and we're the most accurate. And I'm not just saying that because I work there and I'm biased, which obviously I am, but um, that's independently verified. So I'm not just making that set up. But it doesn't matter what metric you look at, uh, we're the number one 
um, most accurate weather app. So when it goes to making a forecast, it's really a combination of several things. We're, we're the biggest weather company in the world, so we have a ton of computer power. We have IBM to back us up on that. So we, have, we run in-house computer models, um, and then we have a team of over 100 meteorologists that look at the data and massage it and tweak it based on their experience. So I, as a meteorologist, might look at the data and say, oh yeah, the computer model is saying it's gonna do this, but I think maybe it might be more over here. So I tweak the data just a little bit, and that's what ends up getting sent out to the forecasts in the app and on the web page. Speaking of tech, let's talk tech. Artificial intelligence is all the rage these days, but is AI the answer some people suggest, and how is your team using AI? Yeah, so AI, the buzzword of the year, I guess. Wouldn't be a, a tech discussion without talking about AI, but we've used AI for a long time. We've always called it machine learning, before it was cool to call it AI, but basically what it's doing in this context, in the context of, of weather, is it's looking at certain patterns and it's recognizing um, better than a human could, hey, when we look at historic patterns like this in a computer model, say it's gonna do this thing, um, no, maybe it's gonna be more over here. So essentially what it comes down to is just one more tool in the toolkit that we have to give a really accurate forecast. We wouldn't re ever rely on it exclusively, but it helps sort of tweak those numbers to give them the most accuracy possible. Now, where can my viewers go for more information? Just download the app, uh, the Weather Channel app, or they can, uh, they can go to <laughs> weather.com too. It's the, the same great data. Dan Leonard, thank you so much for joining us on Morning Blend. I really appreciate it. Dan Leonard is a senior meteorologist at the Weather Company, which is the Weather Channel. Thank you again.